Welcome everybody to the second lecture of Python. Today we are going to talk about three different topics. The first one will be about what modules, scripts, libraries, and packages are in Python and how they differ from one another. Second, we will talk about functions in Python. There are a bunch of functions that are built in. There are some you can call from libraries or modules, um, but you can also create your own function. And what is the mechanism to call such a function? Lastly, we'll talk about pseudocode, which are not exactly code. They are a set of instructions in half English, half code that allows to facilitate the um, mechanism of your algorithm. First, we are going to discuss the difference between scripts, module, packages, and libraries in Python. The very first uh, thing we want to do is to make the distinction between scripts and module. I have here on the blackboard a function on both uh, sides. There is a function here. The function adds two numbers together and returns the sum. Now, the script, the, the, sorry, the code here that you have on the left, which is a script, um, has actually two additional commands. The first one is to create a variable um, that will uh, hold the value that is uh, obtained by calling the function add that we just defined. And then the second, it will print that, um, the, uh, that value of that variable uh, called uh, result. So clearly here, I have pieces of lines of codes, and then I'm doing something in addition to it. When it is run, something will happen, and it will actually return 14. The code to your right is essentially the same in the beginning, but there are no more instructions afterwards. So if I run this uh, piece of code in Python, nothing is actually going to happen. The purpose here of this function that is actually saved into a module called add is to be called or to be imported into a script. I can do this by, for instance, using this function from the module add, import the function add. And we will see that this is, um, this is quite useful um, because then we can actually import modules uh, into our script uh, without having to redefine the, the entire functions that we need. All right, I'm going to demonstrate here how to import modules within Python. So our very first example, um, we're going to import the math module for mathematics. Okay, here you have. Um, and then um, if we want to know what functions exist within that module, what we can do is to type in dir and between brackets math, and that should return then to us all the functions which are part of the um, math module you can see here for instance um, there is one that is called sqrt for square root so we're gonna try and so then the question is um, how do we go about this so then you would essentially do math here math dot they will probe your bound of, of functions sqrt and let's say 16 for instance and that should return us uh, the value 4 I'm just gonna do print here to make sure that it will actually print on the screen for. Let's look at another uh, module. For instance, we could use the module uh, random. Okay. Um, and then here, I would basically do print. We have a bunch of functions, of course, random, random. Um, and then what this does, it creates a random number between 0 and 1, which is quite useful sometimes. And if you run it many times, you can see that the number is about to change. I'll show you another example uh, of a module. It is a time. Okay, uh, and then you can have print, for instance, here, time dot get time. I believe that's it. Um, and then print on the screen. Let's see if this works. Okay, so here we had a small issue. So it's actually not get time, it's GM time. Here we go. Um, and then it tells us the time uh, right now, which is, I don't know if you can see it, 2021, 29 of um, January, and it's 14.7, which is the time in uh, UK. All right. So that's an example about module. There is, of course, plenty of others um, that we can talk about. Next, we make the distinction between 
packages and libraries. A package is usually a collection of related modules. Now it's possible that a package is only one individual module, but that is quite rare. And typically then those modules are arranged into subfolder and there is that file called init, um, which tell that uh, Python that there is actually a package. Libraries um, are actually, it's an umbrella term that means a bundles of codes, could be function classes and so on. Um, those libraries can have multiple modules in them. Um, a couple of examples that are quite popular, you have the matplotlib uh, library that uh, has a bunch of modules and functions for plotting in Python. You have the Python standard library, which has over 100 modules to perform common task. Now, again, um, we will interact a little bit with those packages uh, and uh, library uh, later on uh, this, um, this semester. Our second topic today are functions. So what are functions? Those are essentially a block of code that runs when it is called. It performs some specific task uh, and it typically use parameters or also sometimes called arguments which are passed um, uh, as an input to the function if you want. And generally it will return a result but not always and it's important here returns because in that function especially if you define a function you may have that uh, keyword return that means uh, a result will be provided back to you. They are of course built-in function that's what we're going to talk about next and then uh, the functions that you can create on your own, uh, that will be, I will give some examples on, on that one. Using the standard Python library, there are already a bunch of built-in functions. Examples that you are going to come across, things like length here, that tells us the length of a list or maybe the length of a, uh, of a string, integer to convert to integer or string to convert to string. So. Um, those are very easy, you can just uh, use them, you can just call them. Um, but now we're going to spend a little bit of time on how we are creating our own functions. So how do we go about building our own function? Well, there is actually a specific structure that we should follow that is actually highlighted here to the left. First, we have a keyword, def, that essentially indicate that this is the beginning of a function. Next, we have the name of the function and like we did for naming variables, we want to have a name that actually makes sense uh, and that uniquely identify that function. Next, we have uh, between brackets, parameters or arguments, and those are passed to the functions. They are sort of the ingredient for the function in order to, um, to do something. The colon at the end marks the end of the function header. Then you may have, but not always, some documentation, like commenting, um, that explains a little bit what that function is going to do. And then uh, afterwards you have a statement. So this is really the heart um, or the meat, if you want, of uh, the function, what actually it does. Um, sometimes you may have, but not always, a return when a particular value or a particular file or something else is to be uh, uh, produced by this function. So I just want to give a, an example of one where we're trying to convert pounds to kilos or kilograms. We have here a function that is called pounds to kilo. The argument that I'm passing is pound that the user uh, may enter or maybe it's from a file. And then here we have the heart of this function uh, where we have pound multiplied by 0 0.54, 454, sorry. Um, and then we are returning uh, that, that value. Okay, so I think that's uh, quite important to get a bunch of practice uh, into uh, into this uh, uh, function uh, definition. Here's an example of a function that convert um, the value of feet to meters. Um, as you can see here uh, from my screen, uh, I have here a little bit of comment in the top that explains the purpose uh, of the function, its input, its outputs, uh, who wrote it, uh, and then first version. Um, but anyways, let's focus here about the, how the function is being defined. So we use this define uh, keyword, as I had mentioned. This is the name of the function. You want to have something that makes sense. Um, here, this is the, um, the input or the argument or the parameter that is being passed. Um, here, uh, in this line here, uh, this is really the core of the function. So what does it actually do? It calculates 
um, the length in meters using length feet uh, as the input multiplied by 0 0.305 and then it will return length meters okay so perfect uh, what we would then do is uh, you know you can um, run the script here uh, and then of course you know nothing really happens because I don't have any other statement but I could do for instance here print open brackets convert here feet to meters uh, and here I can say for instance what about 10 feet and I think probably somewhere around the order of two to three meters we're gonna check we run this and it just tells us it's 305 meter. Our last topic is on pseudocode. So pseudocode work a little bit like an algorithm. There is a set of instructions, but they are not written in a programming language quite yet. They're mostly written in half code, half English that anyone can understand. Okay. Once you have written pseudocode, then it's easy to apply or implement those to a programming language. Okay. So there are a bunch of keywords for pseudocode. So for instance, um, if you want to uh, do an input, you would use a pseudocode like get or obtain. If it's an output, you would use things like print, display. Um, for the heart of your uh, script, uh, of your code, rather, you would use things like compute or determine. Um, you would need to maybe initialize um, at the beginning, is if you do a sort or search through a database, you need to initialize to the top. Then you may want to uh, increment or you may want to decrement if you start at the end. Um, you may need to repeat, and so for that you would use keywords while or for. Uh, if you have a conditional statement or a selection, you would use something like if, then, or else. And then if you need to call a function like a subroutine, then you would use a keyword call. Okay, so let's take a simple example here of a day-to-day -day, um, day -day, um, activity, like when I want to eat some cereals, for instance, what do I need to do? Well, we can see here, um, so first we want to get the cereals, next we want to put the cereals in a bowl, then we want to get the milk, then we add the milk to the cereal, then we fill a spoon, and then we're going to repeat this um, procedure over and over, right? until the spoon uh, is uh, not empty uh, um, and then at the end you would essentially uh, hopefully wash your dishes. Now you can see here those are a set of specific instructions. It is the same when you brush your teeth, if you make a lasagna for instance, or whatever type of uh, actions that uh, require some repetitions. And those again are very useful because from this you could then program this into um, the language of your choice. Okay. So I hope this is, um, this is useful, but it is a very good practice um, in, uh, in, program, in programming to organize your thoughts and have a good flow of your uh, actions.